In today's video, we're going to be going over box fill calculation. By the end of this video, you will know how to do it without doubt. It's very simple. We're going to go over all the steps, and I'm even going to be giving you multiple different boxes afterwards for you to see real-world scenarios and to test out your knowledge. All right, so let's get into the video. This box is a 44 cubic inch box. The rule is, is that you need to allot a certain amount of space to each conductor, and it's based on different sizes. So 14 gauge counts as each conductor as two cubic inches. 12 gauge counts as 2.25 or two and a quarter cubic inches. This box here is filled with only 14 gauge Romex, and most of them are 14.3. So each one of these has a ground, two hots, and then a neutral. So three plus ground, and that is what most of these are. There is one 14.2, which only has a hot, a neutral, and a ground. Okay, so it is only a two conductor plus the ground. You count up all of your hots and your neutrals. So that's 17. So I'm going to write that first. 17 conductors. Normally each conductor counts as one. If they're 12 inches long or longer, they count as two. Any wires that originate and terminate within this box, such as a pigtail, does not count, as long again as it's not 12 inches long or longer. Then I'm gonna count up my grounds. Now, the first four grounds count as one of the conductor sizes. So I'm just gonna write one. The next, whatever following grounds I may have in here, as many as I may have, count as a quarter of a whole conductor. So I have two more, so that's gonna be two quarters or half. So I'm gonna write 1.5. So I have 1.5 conductors worth of grounds. Now I'm going to calculate out my clamps, which it doesn't matter how many clamps you have in here, um, they all count as one. So we have 17 conductors, one and a half conductors worth of grounds, quite a few clamps, but they only count as one. And then we have three devices, because this is a triple gang box. Now, if I had switches here, to where I had switch one, switch two, switch three, all on one device, it still only counts as one device. And each device counts as two conductors, okay? So since we have three devices, that is six conductor volumes. We have counted up our conductors, we have counted up our grounds, our clamps, and our devices. Because these are all 14 gauge wires inside of this box, we are going to calculate according to the 14 gauge two cubic inch per conductor requirement. So 14 gauge multiplies times two cubic inches per conductor volume. So that means that we would be at 51 cubic inches needed. And I said at the beginning, this box is only 44 cubic inches. So we have exceeded it by seven cubic inches with what we currently have in here. So to go back over this again, if everything inside of this box was 12 gauge, so 12, three and 12, two wires, we would still count them the exact same way. We would still arrive at 25 and a half conductors worth of volume space needed. But instead of multiplying times two, we'd multiply times 2.25. If it was 10 gauge, then we would multiply by the allowance needed for 10, or eight, or six, or whatever size conductor you might be using. For 14 gauge, it's very simple, you're just doubling. But the four things you have to remember, primarily, you need to remember to count the conductors, count the grounds, the first four only count as one, but every ground after counts as a quarter. If your box has clamps, which again, the only box that does not have clamps or does not require clamps would be a single gang box like this and then you have to count up your devices and each yoke or device is equal to two conductors so this is a quick and easy way as long as you remember to look for those four things you will be able to figure out your box fill needed 
on 99% of all the boxes that you're going to be installing, at least in residential construction. Okay, here is a practicum that you can apply what you just learned to this box. So take a good look at it and pause the video. All right, but here's the answer. So let's go over. First thing I do is I count up all my conductors. So I know this is a two, 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 two. This one's a three over here. Okay, when you're looking at them, they're pretty easy to identify. The thickness is substantially larger with a three conductor Romex. Okay, so two, 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 three. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. So 13, then I count up my yolks. Okay, that's the yolk. And then we're going to count up the cable clamps. So we've got whatever, six cable clamps, but they only count as one. We count up our grounds. So the first four grounds, one, two, three, four, okay, four grounds count as one. And then each ground afterward counts as a quarter. So quarter, quarter, that's half, so one and a half. So that brings our total conductor volume in this box to 21 and a half. Then we know our multiplier for 14 gauge Romex, because that's everything in this box, is two. Two times 21 and a half is 43. So our total box fill is 43. And then we look right here. 52 cubic inches. So we are doing good. We still have nine cubic inches of space in there. So we are set. What about this one? 32 cubic inches is allowed space. And what do we got here? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 for the clamps, 14 for the grounds. So 14 times 2.25, 31.5. And this is a 32 cubic inch box, half of a cubic inch remaining. So if you had a 12.3 in here, say for a fan light combo, you would be overfilled. You'd have to step up. This one is rated at 18 cubic inches. This one is 22 and a half. You can go ahead and pause if you want to figure it out before I tell you. Two, four, six, no clamps. So then we just had ground, which is seven. So seven times 2.25 is a little over 15 cubic inches. So this type of box at 22 and a half cubic inches is made for power in, power out, and a three conductor 12 gauge Romex going to say a fan and light combo. So that's what these are for. But they're nice because they're deep and you just really don't struggle with putting the device in there. Okay, now let's take a look down here. This calculation is slightly different. It has clamps. So that's what you have to add for this box. Not a whole lot of single gang boxes have clamps, but this one does. So again, two, four, five for the clamp, six, seven for the yoke, and then eight for the amount of grounds in here. Only two grounds, so we just count as one. So eight times 2.25 is 18 cubic inches, which is exactly what this box is rated for. All right guys, so those would be the single gang boxes. So here we have one of the ultra thin recessed downlight junction boxes. These things are UL listed, blah, blah, blah. However, whoever designed them cut some corners and the box turns out that it's only got seven and a half cubic inches of space inside to fit everything. And if you look right there, you can quickly see we've got four conductors plus a ground or plus grounds, which means we have at least 10 cubic inches needed for this box. The clamp above has its clamping mechanism inside the box, but you could swap it out for one that has its clamping mechanism outside, so it would not count towards the total box fill volume. So it's really only rated for one 12-2 coming into it. So here is another recess downlight box. And this one is almost right. Okay, two and five eighths by two and three quarters by one and three eighths. 
okay? That comes out to 9.93 cubic inches, almost the 10 cubic inches needed for two 14 to NM cables to come into it. So here's a slightly tricky one. This is a pancake box that is rated for a ceiling fan. And we have a three conductor, 14 gauge Romex wire coming into it. So that's pretty typical to be able to control the light and the fan separate from each other. That means we have three conductors plus ground, which would be eight cubic inches needed for this box. And this box is only rated for six cubic inches. However, one thing that we know that you do not know is that this room is going to get two layers of drywall here on the ceiling as a sound barrier, which means this is going to get an extension and that extension will bring the total volume of this box to 12 cubic inches. If there was a final boss fight in a box fill video game, this would be it. But let's go over it. So we've got four 14.2 going in and four 14.3 NM cables. So it's a total of 20 conductors, eight grounds, no internal clamps because all of these clamps have the clamping mechanism outside the box. And this box is for a luminaire. So it does not have a device like a switch or receptacle going into it. However, these are the curveballs. Inside is, because it's a metal box, there is a grounding screw, and uh, there is a 12 gauge ground wire coming off of that. Also, because this box is so deep, there are a couple of cables in there that are 12 inches or longer to be able to reach out to the front to connect to the luminaire when it is installed. Something else that we have not talked about is something called a stud or a hickey. Yeah, we're not gonna make any jokes about that. So a stud is basically a piece of threaded rod that has a hole drilled in the center that wires can pass through from a luminaire or whatever the fixture may be up into the box. A stud counts as one conductor. A hickey is like a coupling between threaded rod uh, and typically you'd see that on a chandelier. Now this is a wall mounted box. It's gonna have a wall lantern installed on the outside and it neither uses studs nor hickeys to mount the box. It looks something like this picture here and it mounts just via two screws that are outside this box. I'll show you a picture of the front so you can see inside the box. Those wires are longer than 12 inches. So those are gonna count as two. So you can see that the equipment grounding conductor is 12 gauge. So that means that all of the grounds in here will be multiplied by the 2.25 cubic inch per conductor volume. So let's do the math now. There are 20 conductors plus the two conductors that are 12 inches or longer. So that means that there are 22 conductors. We're gonna do that first. So 22 conductors times two, 44. All right, now we go to the ground. Since the grounds have a 12 gauge ground connected to them, that means that they are going to count for 2.25 cubic inches, even though the majority are all 14 gauge. And then we have one ground that is longer than 12 inches for that one line that is coming out. So that means that it's gonna count doubly. So we have eight grounds and one of them has to be counted twice. So we have nine grounds in there, which of course the first four are one and then the next five will count as quarters. So we have two and a quarter conductor volumes worth of grounds. So we multiply 2.25 times 2.25 because it's 12 gauge and we arrive at a little over five cubic inches. So that means our total box fill volume needs to be around 50 cubic inches because we don't have any devices, we don't have any studs, hickeys, and all of our clamps are outside the box. If you got this box correctly and understood everything that was going into it and a part of this box, then 
there is no doubt you understand box fill and will have no issues with calculating from here on out. Okay guys, that is it for box fill calculation. So remember those four things. You need to count your conductors, your clamps, your grounds, and your yokes or devices. If you can remember that, you can pretty much find out if any of your boxes are overfilled or not. So I'll see you in the next video. I know they're NM cables, they're NMB cables, okay? It's called vernacular and it changes. Every place has some new word in their vernacular and it might not be the same one you use. So.